All right, uh, guessing we'll get started now. Uh, we've got to cover today, so uh, what do we have to get to begin uh, soon? Well, thank you everyone for joining us in today's uh, webinar. Um, today's webinar will be recorded and it will be available on both our websites, the Fall Catalyst and the Woody website, as soon as the webinar is done. On today's webinar, we're focusing on a partner, uh, Woody Technologies, and uh, we'll see how uh, File Catalyst has been integrated into the different uh, platforms within Woody, and as well as we'll get a chance to see um, you know, what uh, products Woody offers and uh, what the benefit is in the media and broadcast space. My name is Elton Canero, and I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships and Cloud Services here at uh, File Catalyst. And with me today, all the way from Zurich, beautiful sunny Zurich, unlike the cold weather we have here in Ottawa, is Aurelian. Aurelian? Hi. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Cool. Yeah, so we have quite a bit to cover today, and we have an exciting demo at uh, midway through the presentation that will show you the Falk Alice integration within uh, Woody. Um, there will be time for a Q&A after the webinar. Uh, on the web GoToWebinar, there's a questions panel, so you can put in your questions there. Uh, we'll get to them uh, during the Q&A session. So for those of you guys joining us for the first time, um, a bit about File Catalyst as a company. Uh, we create uh, file transfer technologies and solutions that allow you to move your files securely you know, efficiently and reliably over global networks. Um, we use a patented UDP algorithm. We've been doing, uh, we've been around for about over 18 years and we've been, our entire focus has always been around file transfer and be able to move, you know, files across different networks and trying to maximize those networks that you have. With the adoption of cloud, uh, File Catalyst has built in uh, support for uh, a number of object storage platforms. Uh, in this case, you can archive to various uh, object storages, public as well as private. On the public side, we support you know, the Amazon S3, Azure Blob, as well as we support various local um, you know, object storage platforms that can be run on-premise. Uh, and this comes in handy when you're you know, uh, simulating uh, S3 traffic and you don't want to you know, pay for ingest and outgest uh, you know, going to the public clouds. Um, we have a lot of tools that allow you to manage your file transfers, um, uh, web-based tools, desktop uh, tools that you know make it easy for you to see what's going on in your network. Uh, for the partners as well as uh, you know uh, companies that wish to embed our technology within their existing platforms and existing portals, we have a number of APIs that you can use to really build in file transfer into those platforms. Our technology is very easy to use. You can get up and running within minutes and uh, it really provides you a simple way to move files across your network. Um, in the media and broadcast space, we've won a couple of Emmys for our work around you know, movement of uh, you know, media assets and files across uh, different networks. Um, you can read more about this on our websites. We have a number of blogs and articles around this. So File Catalyst is uh, very much a horizontal application. It can work across various verticals. Uh, media and broadcast is one of our large verticals, but we also support, you know, um, oil and gas, energy, healthcare, uh, corporate IT, and uh, gaming industries, and so on. And here are some of our, you know, proud customers who use File Catalyst, you know, to date. At this point, I'll hand it over to Aurelian. Um, Aurelian, welcome. Tell us about Woody Technologies. Thank you, thank you, Halton, and uh, um, and thank you for hosting the the event and for giving us a um, a chance to highlight on the on the partnership. Um, a, a word about Woody Technologies. Woody Technologies is um, uh, a French-based co company uh, belonging to Ashkida Taldea Group. Uh, Ashkida Taldea is um, uh, one of the main players in France uh, in providing uh, services to broadcasters uh, and uh, post producers including technical support, project management, uh, training, um, and so on. Um, Woody Technologies was uh, founded with uh, the idea to provide solutions, software solutions to broadcasters um, to streamline post-production workflows. Uh, that, that's why we have been focusing until now mainly um, on ingest and outgest workflows. And uh, in general, we take care of all around uh, PAM, MAM, NLE, connectivity, and interoperability. 
for years now, we have uh, built a powerful uh, transcoding engine. It's one of our main uh, our main tools and also workflow engine. Both are the basis of uh, all uh, Woody uh, software and all Woody solutions. Um, of course, we make strong integrations with uh, uh, vendor uh, vendor partners, uh, especially MAM and PAM uh, vendors. And uh, we do a lot of customization, customization on our own products and also uh, complete tailor-made uh, solutions for our customers. Um, we are very user-oriented. We are, uh, our colleagues at HK Data, they are spending time every day with uh, journalists, uh, with uh, technicians, editors, and uh, we try to uh, really identify um, and and uh, and the needs and and to fit them, uh, and we provide solutions that are easy to deploy, easy to use, and easy to maintain. You can almost forget it once it's deployed. Um, and maybe you can go to the next slide, Elton. Thank you. Um, so the the product line of uh, Woody Technologies. Um, Combining owned product, third-party product, and custom developments. The the owned product um, uh, are six now. Uh, we have Woody Intuit, Woody Ingest, and Woody Social. Um, that are the the Ingest products. Uh, Woody Intuit dedicated to journalists and um, editors for uh, manual Ingest tasks. Woody Ingest for automated workflows, and Woody Social for uh, Ingest from social networks. We have Woody Outgest and Woody Check-in, which are products dedicated to Avid customers to streamline workflows around uh, Avid environments. And we have Code Reporter, uh, a legacy product of us, uh, to, to transfer content from the field to the main facility. Um, we also have third-party products, especially one developed with our partner Automated. Um, Share it is um, a tool to integrate uh, Adobe graphics tools, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe After Effects uh, with uh, various uh, PAM and MAM systems and uh, offer uh, a nice experience to graphic artists to exchange content with uh, editors. And finally, we have all the custom developments and integrations we make. Um, uh, there are a lot of different cases, uh, including uh, graphic solutions, transcoders control, um, MAM and an RCS connectivity tools, uh, web portals for review and approval workflows. A lot of different stuff can be made. Of course, we um, work with partners. Uh, technology partners is something really important to us. Um, uh, we, of course, work with uh, camera vendors, also PAM, MAM vendors, but um, also all the players of the industry uh, uh, who provide the interesting solutions for our customers. We have especially a strong partnership with Avid. I mention it because the demo after will uh, be in the context of an Avid environment. Uh, and we are a member of the Avid Alliance Partner Program since uh, uh, last IBC. Some of our customers are here. Uh, we are now present in um, 15 countries. Uh, we have uh, our headquarters are in Paris, and of course, we have a, a very good customer base in, in France. Uh, but we also have an office in Los Angeles uh, for the US and South America uh, for one year now. And uh, we also have an office in Zurich, Switzerland. Maybe I'll turn, you can yeah. take over. Yeah, thanks, Roman. Thanks for the great introduction to Woody. Yeah, on that note, you know, talking about Avid, um, you know, File Catalyst is as well an Avid Alliance partner. So uh, combined, you'll see this webinar talking about, you know, how File Catalyst, uh, Woody, and Avid can work together with, you know, within your Avid workflows, amongst other, you know, different workflows that you may have. So at this point, let's talk about uh, some of the transfer tools that you may or may not be aware of. So there are a number of different transfer tools out there. Um, we have existing public file transfer tools. FTP, and then we have File Catalyst. Uh, my nice icons at the top of each of this box will sort of give you a hint as to where I'm going with this in terms of speed. Um, if you look at the underlying transfer technology and what makes File Catalyst fast, uh, we'll start looking at the biggest thing that makes file transfer slow when it comes to TCP-based file transfer. Uh, latency is the round trip time it takes for a packet to be sent from the source to the destination and acknowledgement to be received that a packet has been received. 
a lot of TCP-based uh, file transfer tools, including FTP, is a very serial process. Uh, you have a number of packets that are sent, um, acknowledgements are received once those packets have been received at the destination site, and then more packets are sent. That's okay if there's no latency or virtually no latency on your link, but what happens when you have a lot of latency on the link, um, it can take a long time for these acknowledgements to come back. With Falcals, we do things a bit differently. We'll load up multiple blocks of data. So blocks of data can be defined within the software in terms of how big you want the block to be. And we'll send multiple of these blocks at the same time, ensuring we're saturating that link. Unlike FTP, opposed to acknowledging every single packet that's being received, it causes a lot of chatter on the FTP uh, protocol. With Falcals, we implement what's called a negative acknowledgement. So we'll only acknowledge what's missing um, versus acknowledging every packet. So how does latency affect speed? Um, so if you look at uh, you know this graph, we talk about uh, file catalyst and FTP. This is 100 megabits per second. Uh, you'll see that as you start increasing in latency, uh, the red line, which is FTP, drops down, whereas with file catalyst, uh, we'll maintain 400 megabits per second. So apart from speed, we've built in a number of uh, features into the protocol. Um, so yeah, we can transfer files at full link speed. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a UDP protocol with a proprietary retransmission and congestion control. Um, it's built in-house, it's, it's, and again, it's a patented algorithm. We can transfer files up to 10 gigabits per second with encryption on any commodity hardware. Means, this means that you don't need any special chipsets. You can, as long as you buy you know, the hardware from a, you know, a computer store that supports 10 gigabits per second, we can guarantee to maximize that, uh, you know, the hardware. We're not affected by latency, so regardless how far the two endpoints are, uh, we'll ensure that we're transferring files at full line speed. When it comes to file transfer, um, there are a lot of other features that are necessary in, in securing and protecting that, uh, you know, that movement of data. So uh, we have encryption that can be built in. Uh, we have compression as well if you want to reduce the amount of data being pushed across the wire. But all of this takes up CPU cycles. And um, with Falcalis, we leverage a multi-core CPU architecture, which means that even if you do use encryption or compression, it's not compromising your speed. We'll still guarantee you full line speed. Congestion control, um, in terms of uh, what is congestion? So congestion happens when you're trying to oversaturate your link. This means that you're trying to push as m more data than the link can handle. So how does file catalyst uh, fare when it comes to congestion control? We immediately detect the destination receive rate. So that's one thing that's built into the protocol. So we are, as soon as the transfer starts, we'll try and see what the maximum speed on the link is, and we'll start transferring files at that speed. As, as applications come on, as applications start you know, consuming some of that bandwidth, Falcals will detect it and slow down. As soon as those applications are done, whether it's streaming a video on YouTube, whether it's you know, performing in-house transfers, etc., Falcals will pick back up and re reclaim the unused bandwidth. For most deployments, uh, anywhere from one megabit to one gigabit per second, there's no tuning required um, in addition to what comes out of the box with File Catalyst. So how fast is file catalyst? I have a simple uh, sort of a graph here, um, image, I guess, uh, that uh, talks about FTP and file catalyst, as well as the different uh, latencies that exist between the two locations. So we have two scenarios, a one gigabit connection and a 10 gigabit connection. A transfer from Amsterdam to London on a one gigabit connection, um, the RTT, so the latency is around 50 milliseconds. Uh, we're transferring a 10 gigabyte file here. You'll see with FTP it takes about an hour and 28 minutes, whereas with file catalyst, we can transfer an entire file in a minute and 23 seconds. The same file, uh, just a longer distance to travel, so New York to Buenos Aires, so the RTT is about 150 milliseconds. FTP will take about three hours and six minutes, whereas file catalyst takes about a minute and 23 seconds. LA to Mumbai, a further distance to go, a 10 gigabyte file, FTP takes three hours and 22 minutes, whereas file catalyst takes a minute and 23 seconds. So as you can see, regardless of how far the endpoints are, uh, file catalyst maintains the same time in terms of transferring that 10 gigabyte file. A much more interesting case, if you have this bandwidth, 10 gigabits per second, um, a 10 gigabyte file from LA to New York, you're looking at 70 milliseconds. Uh, FTP can take about two hours um, and 19 minutes, whereas uh, file catalyst takes about 8.4 seconds. 
And if you look at LA to Rio, uh, the RTT is about 130 milliseconds. Uh, FTP takes three hours and 27 minutes. Um, File Catalyst takes 8.4 seconds. London to Sydney, 300 milliseconds. A 10 gigabyte file, FTP takes five hours and 50 minutes, whereas File Catalyst takes 8.4 seconds. So even from a, a long distance transfer from all the way from London to Sydney, we can transfer you know, a 10 gigabyte file and a 10 gigabit connection in 8.4 seconds. So at this point, I'll welcome back Aurelian to talk about the integration use cases and how File Catalyst can be used within Woody. Aurelian, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Elton. Um, we have decided to, to partner uh, with uh, uh, File Catalyst because um, it came from our customer that several use cases um, could uh, uh, require transfer acceleration and uh, the combination of uh, the all solutions and File Catalyst solutions can be really relevant for some uh, use cases. Um, the first one, of course, is remote ingest to central facility from a local office or uh, from the field if you are a freelance reporter. Uh, this is the, the use case we will um, uh, see more in details uh, later. Um, transcode and transfer to distant playout sites if you have, uh, as it happens more and more, the, the playouts uh, outsourced on, on a different side, you might, uh, you might need the transfer content from your production environment to your playout envir environment. Um, of course, it's large files in this case. Um, and another uh, use case is um, a cloud archiving workflow, uh, uh, archive content from your uh, production environment uh, uh, to any archiving system located on another site. There are many other use cases, uh, um, many other combinations that we can imagine. Um, and um, uh, of course, if you have other use cases, just, just ask us and uh, we'll tell you uh, what, we, what we can do for you with our solutions. Um, we will uh, look at the first one uh, more in details because I'm sure it's uh, it can be interesting for most of you guys. Um, it's about remote ingest. So uh, you can have local offices or field reporters and a distant production facility with, uh, let's say, an Avid Interplay production system and Avid storage uh, in place. And the local offices or field reporters need to transmit either raw material or edited stories uh, to the post-production facility, uh, of course, including media, but also metadata to be, to be transferred. Um, I will show you how it works, and I think it will be better than uh, the drawing. Um, so, Elton, if we can start a demo. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, yeah. See, we can see your screen. You say good. Thank you, Elton. Um, so here on my laptop in Zurich, I have uh, Woody Intuit uh, installed. We'll um, get back here in a second. And um, in Azure, uh, we have uh, so uh, in the cloud uh, we have uh, one file catalyst server and one Interplay production server. Um, for your information, these two virtual machines are hosted in uh, uh, the on the east coast of, of the US. Uh, uh, by Microsoft, Microsoft Azure. Um, Woody Intuit is our tool um, for camera card ingest, but it's doing way more than just camera card ingest. Um, here in the, this uh, web user interface, um, I can, as a journalist or as an editor or as a technical operator, I can load any kind of video, audio, images, files uh, to prepare them for, for ingest. Um, I can either put a card, uh, P2 card or SBIOS card in a card reader, or I can just uh, browse my file system or network drive or an external drive to locate all the media files and the media structures I have. I can even scan my system to identify all the media structure uh, um, known by Woody Intuit. Uh, here you can see that we identify P2, XD cam, Canon footage, of course, but also we have here 5D, we have uh, GoPro cards, or just folders containing audio files, photo files, uh, or any uh, single media file. So we can load uh, several of these uh, uh, um, folders and cards uh, in, the, in the user interface in the same time. The ID of Fully Intuit is to be the one-stop uh, shop for all manual ingest tasks. So, uh, 
any kind of media you want to ingest, you can load it and you can ingest it with the exact same workflow, which is really important. Um, once the clip will be loaded um, in the Woody Intuit user interface, I will show you that we have a lot of uh, features, but first, um, be aware that this user interface can really be customized to, to your needs, depending on the kind of user you have in front of uh, the computer. Uh, we have uh, designed Woody Intuit to be used especially by non-technician users. So journalists can use it. There is, uh, you can hide all technical informations uh, if you want, or, or if you have technical operators, you can show more and display more information about what you are uh, preparing. Um, of course, uh, you can uh, preview the clips here. Uh, in the user interface, uh, you can create sub clips for partial ingest uh, if you want to just uh, ingest a portion of a, of a clip, uh, and you can uh, see all the metadata about the clips. Now comes the selection part. Before selecting the clips for ingest, we have to choose a profile. You can have different profiles if you are dealing with different workflows or if you have different target environments to address. Um, here are the sample profiles we have configured for the demo, but of course you can totally customize your, uh, your profiles. I will here choose Avid Interplay via File Catalyst Profile, and I will uh, show you right after this profile, it's containing all the technical information about the target format, the target destination, and so on. Let's have a look. Here is the profiles configuration page of Woody Intuit. Uh, I will not detail everything here because we have a lot of features, but what you can see here is that we have uh, transcoding rules. So we can decide for each source format or for each kind of media coming in the pipeline, what is the expected target format. Of course, we have options on audio, of resi on resizing, we can uh, stitch the clips together during the ingest. We have all the delivery settings uh, for the for the media and the metadata. And here we have the metadata field that you want to display in your user interface. Here comes a very important feature of Fully Intuit. I will go to my Interplay via File Catalyst profile. It's the custom mandatory field. You can ask the user and you can force them to give a minimum set of metadata before doing the ingest. What we want here is to avoid non-identified content in the production environment. Uh, we also can use this metadata for naming rules, grouping rules, subfolder creation rules, and for notifications. As you can see, there are a lot of technical settings here. But if we are back to the user interface, we just have preview selection of the clips. And here we have the mandatory fields that are circled red to say the user that he has to put something here. And if he doesn't, the ingest will not start. So here we have been asked to um, say for which show this uh, footage is and uh, what is the story. Uh, so uh, Cuba. Travelers, let's say. And you can see in the name column that the four clips I've selected have been dynamically renamed based on the metadata, which means you will have something really clear in the target system. And especially if the target system is on another side, it's important, it's important to have something well indexed. I will just click ingest now. What will happen is that each clip will be analyzed against the profile and Woody Intuit will decide if a transcoding is required or if the clip can only be rewrapped. And of course, all this processing is handled by uh, the Woody engine. Oh, we have a mistake here, uh, a failure here. It's the demo effect, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> I think I have an idea where it comes from. Yes, it's about the file catalyst transfer agent. Sorry for that. Um, so, uh, once the clip has been transcoded or rewrapped, uh, he will be transferred over the file catalyst protocol to the distant file catalyst server. Uh, now, if we switch 
to the monitoring of what's happening on uh, our file catalyst server. So this is the, the file catalyst server admin page that uh, lets me uh, monitor what's happening. We can see that the transfer of the first clip has started. Uh, and uh, this clip is currently being transferred to our uh, file catalyst server. Uh, each clip will be transferred and you can see here that the 10 megabits uh, allowed by my uh, license are well used uh, uh, by, the, by the transfer technology. Let me now go to uh, my um, uh, cloud environment on Azure. Uh, so we have here uh, uh, Woody Ingest installed on this uh, file catalyst server and we have an interplay uh, production server running on another virtual machine and I can see what is in this interplay system uh, through uh, Avid interplay access, which is the media management tool uh, uh, from Avid for uh, interplay. Here we can see, you can see that we have an incoming media folder and inside this folder we have a correspondence folder and for now, there is nothing in this folder. Let's have a look now at Woody Ingest, which is combined with uh, Woody Intuit and File Catalyst in this workflow. Um, in Woody Ingest, we can see that the clips already transferred has been detected with their proper name. And again, it has been analyzed against an Ingest profile. So here we have defined an Ingest profile saying that everything should be transcoded to XDCAM HD50, except for other supported format that can be only rewrapped. Uh, in my case, I was transferring H.264 uh, file uh, for faster uh, transfer, so it has been transcoded to XDCAM HD50, and it has been delivered on the uh, Avid storage uh, and on uh, um, Avid and to Avid Interplay production, and now another clip is coming. If we have a look now at Avid Interplay Access, we can see that in that correspondent folder, we have a new folder being created with the date. And we now, inside this one, have another folder created with my name. It's all based uh, on the metadata that you are available in the Woody profiles, and we can dynamically create folder trees based on this metadata. And of course, in this Aurelian folder, we can find our Cuba Traveler clip. Uh, of course, it's offline now because we are not working in a real uh, ISIS or Nexus environment. Uh, this is to show you that from here in Zurich, I have sent content to my virtual machine running uh, on the East Coast with very few clicks for the user. And what comes in the target uh, interplay system is well named and well organized. Uh, and all of this has been uh, uh, automatic with no other manual task than preparing and starting the ingest. Of course, we have retry options if we want because the first clip failed. Uh, so uh, that was what I wanted to show you today, how we can combine a tool Woody Intuit designed for any user that can support hundreds of source format with file catalyst transfer technology and Woody ingest automated uh, uh, workflows to ingest content end-to-end -end from the field to a, a distant site or a remote facility. Um, end of the demo, Helton. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. I think so that whole, uh, the first uh, file uh, failing was part of the, you know, the whole intention of the demo so you could show the retry feature, which is really cool by the way. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let me go to, uh, let's continue the thing. Yeah. Let's go. Present. Yeah. So I should be so able to screen. So yeah, that, that, continue. Yes, that, that was the, the first use case. You can uh, move forward to the, to the next slide. Uh, the, the other uh, use case um, I wanted to tell you about, uh, and I will not make the demo, uh, but I can easily uh, discuss that with you if it's interesting to you, is about the outgest process from uh, the post-production environment uh, to a distant uh, a system that can be a playout facility, that can be an archive system, or why not web publishing, CDN, anything. So. We have Woody Outgest, which is a tool designed to manage all the transfers from Avid environment to external systems. 
Woody Algest will detect sequences, clips, or subclips in Avid Interplay production environment. It can gather metadata, editorial metadata from Avid iNews, and it can handle this media and metadata and transfer it through the file catalyst technology to a distant site. Uh, Woody Algest is also able to use <coughs> Avid Interplay transcode capabilities for complex sequences rendering. And it's also coming with some um, uh, built-in transcode capabilities to deliver various target formats. Uh, it can extract all the metadata you have in your interplay environment, including uh, system attributes, custom attributes, Avid locators, and of course now all the iNews metadata. So it's a very, very easy way based on watch folders or driven by API very easy way to transfer content from your Avid environment to uh, uh, target systems. That's the second use case. We can, of course, combine all the tools from Woody and the, the solutions from File Catalyst. Um, there is also File Catalyst workflow that allow us to uh, do more. Um, what I have not mentioned before is all the notifications we have in all Woody products. Uh, so mail notification, file notification, or HTTP calls to uh, third-party systems, uh, which makes us, um, uh, which makes possible to um, uh, to build very complex and integrated workflows. Of course, uh, there are a lot of benefits in these integrations. Um, the first one is that you get highly automated workflows with very few manual tasks. Um, we handle both media and metadata, and metadata handling is a very important topic to us. You have everything monitored on the same user interface, which is very important as we integrate with File Catalyst uh, with the Transfer Agent API. And uh, uh, you have, uh, at the end, a very cost-effective solution, and working on different sites is not an issue when you combine all these solutions. The integration with uh, File Catalyst uh, protocol is now available with in Woody Intuit, Woody Ingest, and Woody Outgest. And as I said before, we do a lot of customization. Uh, so if you have specific needs that require transcoding, ingest, outgest, and file transfer uh, technologies, just ask us, and Elton and I will be really happy to, ha to help you. Um, how to get the integration? I think I've uh, almost all said. Uh, just adding that there is no additional license uh, on Woody side uh, to use a File Catalyst uh, protocol. It's available as a standard delivery protocol uh, for all the products I mentioned. Uh, so there is no additional cost uh, for the customer to use uh, uh, Woody uh, and, uh, and File Catalyst uh, combined. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So from the File Catalyst side, um, uh, I should have covered this earlier on. Uh, we have three products, uh, File Catalyst Direct, which is a flagship point-to-point -point, uh, file transfer platform. And then we have our File Catalyst Workflow, which is a web-based application that allows you to ingest and, um, and deliver files by an email address. And then we have our web-based monitoring tool called Central that allows you to get a bird's-eye view of your entire deployment. In terms of the integration within Woody, uh, it's our File Catalyst Direct that's been integrated. Uh, the File Catalyst Transfer Agent is part of the File Catalyst Direct Suite. It's a client application. There is no fee to download the client application. Uh, we offer you a limited distribution. Um, when requesting a license uh, to use within Woody, uh, make sure you let your salesperson to know that you need an integration uh, flag enabled on the license key so that this integration works for you. Um, one of the, you know, as part of the demo that uh, Aurelian did was showing you how you can move uh, clips and, uh, you know, sub clips from your, you know, Woody installation. So from, uh, you know, Woody ingest all the way to, you know, Azure. Uh, you can also, uh, File Catalyst has support to read and write to object storage, to Azure Blob. So if you need to archive some of this footage, you may not need it today or tomorrow, but some point in the future, you may, you know, want to you know, some of this footage and reuse some of this footage, uh, you can still use the same technology and have File Catalyst write it straight into your blob storage. Cool. So time has come for questions. Um, if you look onto your GoToWebinar panel, there's a questions section. Uh, so go ahead. Um, if you have any questions for us, uh, type, type them in, and I'll read them out loud so the entire audience can uh, hear the question as well as... Uh, depending on the question, either I'll answer it or Aurelian will answer it. 
Cool. Yeah, looks like we have some questions coming in already. Um, so the first one, uh, can Woody Intuit send uh, to multiple destinations simultaneously? Um, that is a local editing system and remote facility or uh, two uh, different file catalyst servers? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we have multi-target mode uh, in Woody Intuit that can be useful for uh, for many purposes. Uh, you can have uh, two different environments. You can have uh, uh, a local uh, Avid environment, editing environment, and, uh, uh, and the target uh, site where you want to send to. So uh, we can, with one action from the, uh, from the, the guy in front of the, the software, we can send transcode and send to both uh, local and distant site or to two different distant sites. And uh, uh, yes, it's it's something that's possible with Woody Intuit. Cool, thanks for that. And um, I'm guessing with the new um, platform that Avid has released, uh, I believe they released this last year, the Central UX, um, um, can, is, is Woody integrated uh, within Avid Media Central at all? Yes, yes, we have um, shown this integration for the first time uh, at uh, uh, IBC, at last IBC. Uh, we have made an integration uh, of Woody into it inside uh, Avid Media Central, which is um, allowing uh, users uh, to uh, prepare and trigger ingest tasks directly in Media Central UX um, uh, environment. So it's uh, uh, it's. Uh, very good added value because uh, users have only one user interface to work with, and they can prepare and uh, and uh, and uh, start ingest tasks. Great! Now that that that's really cool. Um, and it, so uh, let's see if there's any more questions coming in. Yeah. Oh, there's another one that's come in. Oh uh, yeah. So this one is uh, for, for for me. How is File Catalyst licensed? Uh, by bandwidth site, yes. So File Catalyst um, has a different licensing options. Uh, we have a perpetual on-premise uh, license that is, uh, you know, uh, licensed based on how much bandwidth you want to consume. Uh, File Catalyst is also available now on uh, the AWS marketplace. So you can spin up an instance and pay by the hour. Uh, we are we are launching new licensing models for different workflows. Uh, consumption by gigabyte uh, is one of the you know hot um, licensing models that we will be releasing in the next month so if you need more information on that by all means reach out to us and we can share this information with you and there's another question coming in uh, do you have any workflows for moving content between two interplay maps uh, sorry interplay pam sites um, it's called go ahead yes it's 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 coming in the the funny point is that um, uh, the first uh, integration will be uh, combining file catalyst because the two inter uh, comp file catalyst and Woody Outers because the two interplay systems are uh, 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 very uh, far away one from each other. So uh, yes, uh, we are working on um, on uh, on this for a while now uh, to be able to uh, get a sequence with all the media related to this sequence from one interplay system and uh, consolidate the, the, the media file and transfer the sequence with all the consolidated media uh, to the uh, to the target uh, interplay system. So it's not released yet, but it's, it will come uh, in, in the coming two months. Yeah, and on that note, uh, File Catalyst also has an integration with an interplay delivery. So if you have interplay delivery enabled on your PAM, you can, uh, uh, invoke the interplay delivery APIs that will call the file catalyst solution to uh, transfer that file um, with and at full line speed between your two sites. Um, it looks like we have another question coming in. Um, are Woody solutions hardware agnostic? So yes, you. fully agnostic. We do not provide hardware. We are a software vendor and uh, we have customers running our products on very different hardwares, uh, HP, uh, Dell, uh, laptops, uh, uh, depending on the product, so we are totally agnostic from the hardware. Of yeah. course, we provide recommendation on the hardware configuration, and we have uh, documentation on on that and some benchmarks too. Uh, but uh, we are agnostic from the hardware. And and what about the operating system? I'm guessing Windows. Yes, we are Windows based. Cool. Cool. Um, so let me see if there's any more questions coming in. Yep. Yep, there's um, one more coming in. Uh, 
how does Intuit work um, as a standalone app or the client server model? Uh, until now, it was working on, only uh, in a in a standalone mode, uh, but we are uh, off. So the the transcoding and rewrapping task were were um, uh, done on the local machine. But we are we have started with the media central integration, and uh, we are continuing this way to offer new architectures to have a client server based uh, architecture and to be able to. Uh, delegate the, the the media processing to the server when the client just uh, uh, is just used to to trigger tasks. Cool. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, there's another one. How can AWS Audi license version integrate with other apps? Uh, so that's a great question. So. Running file callus in AWS by the hour um, is it's pretty much the same way as running it on premise or running it you know anyone on any of the cloud. Uh, the only thing is that opposed to coming to us for a license key, it's built into the VM for you. So, so as soon as you spin it up, it's licensed. The same functionality, same feature sets that uh, you would get from a file callus server on premise is available you know to you in the cloud. Um, in terms of integration, depending on what you're looking to do. Uh, whether it's bringing content in, pushing content out, uh, using uh, that server as intermediary server, it's all possible. Um, and again, if you can contact us uh, with specific workflow questions, we can definitely help you on a one-to-one -one basis. Cool. And uh, yeah, all the all the information on uh, on uh, you know the pricing um, uh, on the on the hourly stuff is all on Amazon's marketplace. So it's all based on region as well as uh, instance size. So if you go to the AWS Marketplace and look up File Catalyst, uh, you should see by the hour billing. Uh, so click on that, choose your region, and choose your instance size, and you get all the pricing that you that you need. At this point, I think so. We're going to come to the end of the webinar. Uh, Aurelian, thank you very much. Uh, for more information, uh, you can contact uh, Woody Technologies at sales at woody-technologies.com. Their website is www.woody-technologies.com. And again, uh, from the File Catalyst side, uh, feel free to visit our website, www.filecatalyst.com, or you can reach out to uh, and, you know, the technology partner group at techpartners at filecatalyst.com. If you have any sales questions, uh, you can reach out to sales at filecatalyst.com as well. Aurelian, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Elton. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And if you have... Uh, Yes, any question on the products, uh, on the company, uh, or on the workflow you would like to uh, improve, just uh, just ask us, and there is probably something we can do for you. Great. So, you enjoyed the Zurich great weather, and we'll continue to <laughs> freeze over here in our Ottawa cold. Uh, other than that, uh, thank you to all the attendees who took the time in the day to joining us. Uh, have a great uh, evening, afternoon, uh, morning, wherever you may be. Cheers. Take care, guys. Goodbye.